from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE Conversation here in Palo Alto, CUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We have special breaking news here, which we embody, who's the founder and CEO of H2O.ai with big funding news. Uh, great to see you, CUBE alumni, hot startup. You got some hot funding news. Share with us. We are very excited to announce our Series D. Um, Goldman Sachs, one of our leading customers, and Ping An from China are leading our round. Uh, it's a round of $72 million and bringing our total fundraise to 147. Um, this is an endorsement of um, their, their support of our mission to democratize AI and um, an endorsement of the amazing teamwork behind the company and its customer centricity. Customers have now come to lead two of our rounds. Last round was Series C, um, led by Wells Fargo and NVIDIA. And I think uh, it kind of just goes to say how uh, critical they think uh, we are for their success in AI. Well, congratulations in watching you guys build this company from scratch. We've had many conversations going back to 2013, 14 on theCUBE. You, you covered us long before. You guys were always on the wave and you really created a category. This is a you know, new category that Cloud 2.0 is creating, which is a DevOps mindset, entrepreneurial mindset, creating a category to enable people to have the kind of infrastructure and tooling and software to enable them to do all the heavy lifting of AI without doing the heavy lifting. And you, as, the, as the quote for cloud is, and Amazon always quotes is, you do all the undifferentiated heavy lifting that's required to stand up stuff and then provide tooling for the heavy differentiated lifting to make it easy to use. This has been a key thing. Is that, has that been the, the... Customers have been core to our, um, our company building. Um, I mean, H2O is um, um, here to build an amazing piece of innovation and technology and uh, innovation is not um, not new for Silicon Valley, as you know. Uh, but I think uh, innovation with a purpose and with the focus of customer success is something we represent. And that's been the kind of the kind of key north pointer for us overall. Um, in terms of making things simpler, um, when we started, it was a grassroots movement in open source, mm -hmm. and we won the mind share of, um, mil of millions of um, users worldwide. And uh, that mind share got us a lot of feedback. And that feedback is how we then built the second generation of the product lines, which is driverless AI. Um, we are also announcing uh, our, our mission to make every company an AI company. This funding will power that transformation of several businesses um, that can then go on to win the AI superpower. And certainly the cloud computing, more compute, more elastic resources, always great tailwind. Um, what are you guys going to do with the funding in terms of focus? You mentioned cloud, which is a great um, story. So we're obviously going to make things easier for folks who are doing the cloud. But there are the largest players as well, Google, Microsoft, Amazon. They're right there um, trying to innovate. AI is at the center of every software movement because AI is eating software. Software is eating the world. Um, and so uh, all the software players are right there trying to build a large AI uh, opportunity for the world, and we think in ecosystems, not just empires. And so our mission is to make, uplift the entire uh, AI to the place where businesses can use it, verticalize it, build new products, globalize. We are bu bu building our sales and marketing efforts now with a much bigger, faster So a lot momentum. of go-to-market expansion, more customer focus, more, customer focus. more field sales and, and support kind we of thing. Build our center for AI research in Prague, um, between the C and D, now we're building it in Chennai, in Ottawa, um, and so globalizing the operation, going to China, going to uh, build um, fo focus of, in Asia as well. So, I so think a nice step up on funding at 70, 72 million, you said? 72.5 million. 72.5 million, that's almost double what you raised to date. Nice kick up. So global expansion, nice nice philosophy. That's important to you guys, isn't it? The world has um, is, is become a small village, right? So no, there's no changing that. And data is global. Things are a wide global trend. Uh, it's uh, amazing to see that AI is not just transforming US, it's also transforming China, it's also transforming India, it's transforming Africa. Uh, pay through mobile is a very common theme in uh, worldwide. And I think uh, data is co being collected globally. And I think there's no way to uh, unbox it and, and box it back to a small place. Yeah. So our vision is very borderless and global and we want to 
the AI companies of the Valley to also compete in the global arena. And I think that's kind of why we, we think that it's, it's important to be. Love competition, that's certainly going to force everyone to be more open. I got to ask you about the role of the developer. Certainly, I love the democratization, putting AI in the hands of everybody is a great mission. You guys do a lot of AI for good um, uh, um, efforts, so congratulations on that. But how does this change the nature of the developer? Because you're seeing with cloud and DevOps, the developers are becoming closer to the front lines, they're becoming king makers, they're becoming really, really important. So the role of the developer is important. How do you change that role, if any? How do you expand it? What happens? There are two important uh, transformations happening right now in the tech world. One is the, one is the role of data scientists and the role of um, the software engineer. Right? So they're coming closer in many ways. And in, in actually, in some of the newer places, um, software engineers are deploying data science models. Data scientists are deploying software engineering. So Python has been a good new language. There are new languages that are coming up that help that happen more uh, closely. Software engineering, uh, as we know it, which was looking at data, creating the rules and the logic that runs a program, is now being automated to a degree where that logic is being generated from data using data science. So that's kind of where the, the brains behind how programs run, how computers build, is now being, um, is AI inside. And so that's kind of where um, the world is uh, transforming. Software engineers now get to do a lot more with lot less of tinkering on a daily basis for little little modules. They can probably build a whole slew of an application. What would take 18 months to build is now compressing into 18 weeks or 18 days. Sri, I love how you talk about software engineering and data scientists, very specific. Um, we were, I was again having a debate with my young son around what is computer science was the question. Well, computer science is the study of computers the science of computers. It used to be if you were a CS or comp sci major, which is not cool to say anymore, but when you were a computer science major, you were really a software engineer. That was the discipline. Um, now computer science as a field has spread so far and so broad, you got software engineering, you got data science, you have a new roles are emerging. But that brings up the question I want to put to you, which is the whole, the whole idea of, I'm a full stack developer. Well, if what you're saying you're doing is true, you're, not, you're essentially cutting the stack in half, so it's a half stack developer on one end, and a data scientist has got the other half. So the notion of the full stack developer kind of goes away with the idea of horizontally scalable infrastructure and vertically specialized data and AI. Your thoughts, what's your reaction to that? I think the, f the most, um, uh, the, the, I would say the, the, the most um, scarce resource in the world is empathy. Right, sort of when, when developers have empathy for their users, they now start building design that cares for the users. And so the design becomes still the limiting factor where you can't really automate a lot of that design. So the full stack engineer is now going closer to the front and understanding their users and making applications that are perceptive of how the users are using them and building that empathy into the product. Uh, a lot of the full stack, we used to learn how to like build up a kernel, deploy it on cloud or scale it on your own servers, all of that is coming together in reasonably easy, 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 easier ways. Both cloud is helping there, AI is helping there, data is helping there, and lessons from the data. But I think what is, has not gone away is imagination, creativity, and how to power that creativity with AI and get it in the hands of someone quickly. Um, marketing has become easier in the new world, so it's not just enough to make products, you have to make markets for your products, and then deliver and get that success. So you're saying is actually the, the, the developers I'm, become. The, the consistency, the lower end of the stack of putting the wiring together, the plumbing and the kernel and everything else is done for you. So you can move up. Up the stack. So the stack's growing, so it's still kind of full. No one calls himself a half stack developer. I haven't met anyone say, <laughs> hey, I'm a half stack developer. You know, they're full stack developers. But the, the roles are changing. I think what. There's the, more to do on the front end, creativity, so the stack's extending. The creative is changing. I think the, the, the one thing we've learned um, that we know, learn, we've gone past Moore's Law in the Valley and uh, people are uh, innovating architectures to run AI faster. So AI is beginning to eat hardware. So you've seen the transformation in the microprocessor world. Um, I think once AI starts being part of, uh, part of the overall uh, conversation, you'll see a much more uh, richer coexistence between how a human programmer and a computer computer yeah, programmer yeah. is going to be working closely. But I, I think this is just the beginning of a real 
uh, richness, when you talk about rich interactive applications, you're going to talk about rich interactive appliances. As you start seeing uh, intelligence really spread around the, 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 the home. Sure, we really want to have some fun, we can just talk about 10X, what a 10X engineer is. No, I'm only kidding, we're not going to go there. <laughs> it's always a good debate on Twitter, what a 10X engineer is. Uh, Shree, congratulations on the funding, 72 million dollar, 72.5 million dollars in finance for global expansion. Uh, on the team side as well as in geographies, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, H2O.ai. The, the full stack engineer of future is going back, finishing up your full stack engineer conversation, is going to get that courage and become a leader, right? Sort of going from managers to leaders, developers to founders. I think it's become easier to democratize entrepreneurship now than ever before. And part of our mission as a company is to democratize things, democratize AI, democratize uh, H2O, like in AI for good, democratize water, but also democratize the art of making more entrepreneurs and making remove the, the common ways they fail, common ways, uh, and that's also an, a, a way to kind of create more opportunity, more ownership in the world. And, so, and I think society will benefit from this globally because in the data is the truth, in the data is the notion of being transparent if it's all there, and we're going to get to the data faster, and that's yeah, where AI helps. That's what it is. Shri, congratulations, $72 million of funding for H2O. We're here, the founder and CEO, Shri Ambadi. Um, great success story here in Silicon Valley and around the world. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Thank you.